Hi everyone, Matt Hayward with Adobe Stock here. This is the fifth video in a series of five in which we go behind the scenes creating, uploading, and submitting a series of lifestyle stock photos. In the first videos we went to the shoot itself, we followed by uploading the content to the Adobe Stock Contributor Portal, then we indexed the images by adding keywords, titles, and selecting a category. Now all that's left to do is attach the necessary releases and submit the photos for review. So I've already uploaded a batch of images to my contributor account and I've indexed a couple of files that I want to send off right now. So this first photo is of Ellen in the kitchen and it's indexed. So now if you go under your keywords, you'll see the question, recognizable people or property. I could select no right now and you'll see that a check mark appears in the thumbnail and it says submit for approval because the photo is indexed. I could send this off for a review, but a moderator would take one look at it, see that there is a recognizable person and there's no release, and they would reject the file immediately. So instead, I am going to click yes. And so when you click yes, that there is a recognizable person or property, you get a few options. You can search for an existing release. So if you've already worked with this model, you can scroll through your uploaded releases and find that release, or you can type in their name in the search box, and that'll bring it up that way. I'm going to go ahead and create a new release. And so if you haven't already printed out and gotten a release signed, this is where you would find the Adobe Stock Model release. So I'm going to go ahead and click that link. You're not required to use the Adobe Stock release. I recommend that you do. If you choose to use your own release, just make sure that all the legal jargon that's covered in our release is covered in yours. And then also make sure that your release has a printed name and signature for the model, a witness, and the photographer. If the model's a minor, then you need a parent to sign the release. And make sure that the photographer name on the release matches your photographer name in your contributor account. Don't put your studio name on your release if it's your personal name in your account and vice versa. So I've already got a scanned signed release for Ellen here. So I am going to upload that release. I'm going to name it Ellen. And I'm going to click the attach button. We'll navigate my hard drive. I'll find Ellen's release. I'll select it, hit open. And now that's going to upload it and attach it to this image. And it's going to upload it to my account. So the next time I have an image with Ellen, I don't need to upload a new copy of that release. I can just use the same one over and over again. And so if I wanted to, I could submit this photo for review, but I want to go ahead and send off a second image. Now this shot, I don't know if you can tell from the thumbnail, but it's Chris and Ellen looking out the window of the house that we had rented. Now this is not like an average home found on a cul-de-sac in any town USA. This is a custom uh, built home with unique architecture, very recognizable. So we need a signed property release to sell an image that shows it. And so I've got a property release. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select yes for recognizable people or property. I'm gonna search for an existing release and select the release of Ellen that we had just uploaded. And then I'm gonna create a new release for Chris, who is also visible in the image. I'm going to select attach, find it, open it. And then I am going to create one final release for Alki Home. Select attach, and we'll find that property release open it and that attaches it to the image so now this photo since i've already added the keywords the title selected the category it's got the right releases i can submit it so you'll see that the system indicates i've got two files ready for review so i'm going to go ahead and hit submit for approval and now we'll see both images that are indexed and ready to go for final confirmation i agree these are the images i want to send so i'm going to hit submit one last time that sends these photos off for review. So our moderation team will take a look at them in order that they arrive. The wait time for reviews varies based on how many images are in the queue. The average wait is about two to three days. If you opt in to receive email notifications after your image has been reviewed, your inbox should look something like this. File approved, file approved. You will get some uh, file rejections. I got some rejected from this batch, including one that I thought was pretty interesting. This photo came back uh, rejected because there is no model release attached. And so you might ask yourself, why would I need a model release for this photo? Well, if you look closely, there is a clearly visible and recognizable tattoo on the model's hand. And so Sarah would recognize her hand from anywhere. Her friends and family would know that tattoo, know that that's her. You need permission to sell this picture. And so I attached that release and resent the photo. It came back approved, no problem. And so when you get your images reviewed and approved, they go online. Then hopefully you start seeing some sales notifications come in as well. And so you can go to your sales tab in your account and we'll see that I've actually already had some success with the photos from this shoot. I'm always amazed at the diversity of the content that sells in my portfolio. 
Hudson, my golden retriever, he's a consistent seller, no doubt about it. But this picture of wedding rings, I took that in 2005. So it's almost 12 years this photo has been in my portfolio. It's continuing to drive sales for me today. That's what's great about the microstock model is that long after you're done working on the images, they'll continue to generate income for you. So if you have photos that are just sitting in your hard drive gathering dust, why not put them to work for you? And so that's old. And then here's new. There's four photos from the shoot that is featured in this video series. So they just sold today. Um, you'll see the commission amount on these. It's for a large subscription purchase, 33 cents. So you might ask yourself, well, what the heck am I going to do with 33 cents? I have long since stopped paying attention to the individual commissions. How much money am I depositing into my bank account at the end of the month? That's the important statistic for me. The commission amount is 33% based on the price that's paid per image. That price varies based on the number of images the customer commits to purchasing. So the more photos they commit to buy, the less it costs per image, but the quantity is higher, so the general revenue stream for contributors is larger. So it all works out. It's a volume-based business model. And so you'll see a pretty diverse range of commission amounts in my portfolio. Now, I've been contributing for a number of years, and the key is to consistently upload. You want to be intentional about shooting stock. You want to have a plan. Take advantage of the opportunities that you have available in your life. Pictures of your friends, your family, your pets, your work, all that good stuff shoot it and sell it. It's a great opportunity. I hope that you've gotten something out of this video series. I sure appreciate you watching. My name's Matt Hayward. You can sign up to join and submit at contributor.stock.adobe.com. Thank you so much.